Welcome, Prayer Valley, to Thursday Night Live. How are we all doing? I know I can't hear you. Are you blessed? Amen? Um, I have a quick announcement before I go right into the Word. Um, of course, we know that September 1st will be our annual baptismal picnic. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited. It will be at Caswell Park, which is um, at 1030, at September 1st, at Caswell Park, which... Can't miss it. Austin Road, dead ends, and it's right there. Um, I think the fee to get in might be 5 to $7. Um, but if anybody wants to be baptized, you know anybody, your friends, family, please let me know, and we will get that on, your, on the list. Amen? And then, of course, Jen will be getting a hold of everybody, um, what to bring. Um, we already know what sites we're going to do. Um, the church will be providing the fried chicken, and I'm, I'm excited. Amen. Can't wait. We're going to have a lot of fun. Tonight, my message is called distraction. There's so much distraction. I've been really praying for the last two or three weeks and how there's so much chaos in this world, so much distraction and how the enemy really wants us to keep our eyes focused on everything that's going around the world. Amen. When really are not, we really need to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord. Amen. Because he's my source. He's everything I want. I need him. He's what gives me sanity. Are you hearing me? He gives me peace. He gives me joy. He gives me strength. I, I'm keeping my eyes fixed on the Lord because every time I go to look at things, it's like, oh my goodness. Because I'm not going to worry because I know who I serve. I serve a mighty God. I serve a big God. I serve a God that created everything. Amen. Created this world. But I know that we do live in it, but we're not of this world. Amen. So our focus is always like what's happening, what's going on. I mean, I've been hearing and seeing posts. Oh my gosh, did you hear what happened at the election? Oh my gosh, did you hear what happened at the Olympic? See, you know, that's been happening for thousands of years. Amen. Way before Jesus, things have been happening like that. You know, you've got, you know, homosexual running loose back then. You've got all kinds of things, men dressing as women. So it, it nothing surprises me on what's going on. Amen. People trying to, there's, you know, even with the vision, with who you're going to vote for. And, the, and I can tell you the enemy's always trying to bring division. And we really need to keep our eyes focused on what God is doing. Amen. So, like I said, nothing surprises me. I mean, when I look at the news or look at the paper or anything or the, you know, I go on my phone and watch the news. I'm like, oh, well, well, I know we got more to pray for. Amen. We got to go ahead and preach the gospel. Get our loved ones saved. Amen. Because I know we've got a few loved ones that got to be saved. So that's what we got to do. Amen. I know in John 10:10 10, 10, that the thief comes only still. He comes to steal kill and destroy amen but life is to live committed to christ we must live our lives committed to christ amen we must know that the enemy is always trying to to bring distraction get us focused on everything amen but we must look to the source which is jesus christ amen we look around and we see we see celebrities and we see chaos there and we see people, you know, singing and there's chaos there. And we see athletics that famous athletics that are, you know, it's just everything we see is chaos. Amen. And, you know, I look at all this, you know, um, you know, I start looking at even wealthy people, you know, it's all about the money. It's all about, and I'm not saying not to become a, I'm not saying don't be a singer or be a, a football player. I'm just saying that the enemy would like us to focus on all these things. Amen. And we must really start teaching our children and having a relationship with the Lord. Amen. It's not all about celebrities. It's not all about, oh, look who's coming to town to, to bring music. Amen. It's about Jesus. Amen. And we must, we must look and we must tell our children, listen, Jesus loves you. And he, and he wants a relationship with you. Amen. There's too much distraction. Too much. And we must persuade our younger generation all about Jesus and not the things of the world. Amen. And 1 John 2, 
First John chapter two, verses 15. And it says, of course, I'm not there. Of course, I'm not there. Okay, first John. Okay, here it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. And if anyone loves the world, of, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life, it is not of the Father, but it is of the world. Amen? And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen? That's... That's what I'm hanging on. Amen. I am hanging on to that. I got to live in this world, but I don't have to, I don't have to, you know, condone anything what's going on. Amen. I always taught my children not to love the things in this world. You know, homes come, cars come, material things come. Amen. But I've taught them to not cherish all this stuff because Matthew 6, 19 tells me, do not store up, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and rust destroy and where thieves break and steal. So I really have been, I brought my children up, you know, to work hard for their money, to work, to work and to lean on the Lord, not their own understanding, but to lean on the Lord, to love the Lord for themselves. I can't love the Lord for themselves. I can't do it for them but to also teach them to, to communicate with the Lord, to have a relationship with the Lord. It's so important because now this now generation, you know, you got to have these $150, $200 Nikes, you know, and I took my grandson Braxton out shopping and I thought, mm, his mama's taught him really well because I took him birthday shopping and he wasn't going for these three, $400 Nikes. He was looking for sales. I said, yep, yeah, that's grandma's boy. Cause I've always tried to teach my children. It's not about the money. It's about the quality, but not the money. It's about God will make a way where there seemeth no way when you're school shopping. You know, you don't have to have those $300 shoes. Sometimes you can find those $300 shoes on clearance for 50 bucks, maybe 20, maybe 30. But anyway, you know, but if you store up for you, the treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and, we, and where thieves, they do not break in. Amen. So I'm going to store up my treasure in heaven because that's where it's all about. Amen. So much destruction. And the Lord told me, he's been telling me for the last month, you got to stay one step ahead of the enemy because he is loose with everything he's trying to do. Division, destruction and chaos. And, you know, I've been seeing a spirit, a spirit of offense just lately and I'm thinking man I, I got prayer praying to do amen because he's really coming against the brothers and sisters of the Lord the Christians he really has been and I've been in prayer and I've been fasting and just spending my time with the Lord and I'm like oh Lord what can we do there's too much chaos going on and he keeps saying you just keep your eyes on me don't keep your eyes around the world just keep your eyes and when you see things pray so I'm like, okay, you know, so I be begin to pray for certain individuals and pray for things. Amen. So distraction in first Corinthians 10, 13, and I have a lot of scriptures because that's what God kept giving me. Amen. But in, in 10, 13, it says, therefore, let him who thinks he stands to take heed lest he falls. No temptation has overtaken you except such a common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with this temptation, will you also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it? Amen. So all, so what he's telling me is that, you know, he knows what, how much we can take in this world, but we're not to be distracted of things going on. Amen. Cause we, I know we work. We have children that go to school. Um, not only, you know, do we work and have children in school, we have to help them with their homework. But let's focus on our on what God has given us, our children. Let's focus on the jobs that He has given us, and let's focus on those things and not what's chaos around us. Amen. 
So I'm going to go into the story of, uh, you know, about Paul. And my story that I was reading in Paul, the distractions sometimes can be fame, can be money, can be power, can be success. But what about the story of Paul? Was he famous? Paul was known as a troublemaker among the Jews. Amen? And in, in 26, I'm going to paraphrase, he discorded, he discorded the people. He was a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. And he, you know, was wealthy. He was a judge. But he persecuted the Jews. Amen. He arrested them. He threw them in prison to be punished. But if, as we go into Acts, and I'm going to go into 22. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Paul and what he was up to. And I'm looking at him because was he have fame, money, power? He thought he had power. He thought he had success. He thought he had money. He thought he had fame. But really did he? Because I think the Lord will take us down a notch. And I'm like, okay, Lord. Not that, you know, God can't bless you with success or wealth, but let God do it. And I was looking in at Paul 22, and it goes in uh, verse 6. It says, Now it happened as I journeyed and came near Damascus at about noon. Suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me, and I fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And of course, so I answered, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. So I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Arise and go to Damascus, and there you will be told you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do. And since I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came into Damascus, a certain Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good testimony with all the Jews who dwelt there, came to me, and he stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And that same hour I looked up at him, and then he said, The God of your fathers has chosen you, that you should know his will, and see the just one, and hear the voice of his mouth. See, I think the Lord is trying to tell us something, that we really need to begin to listen to him. We really need to have our spiritual ears open, because God's talking, God's showing you things, but are we listening? Are we paying attention or we just focus on everything that's around that's in a chaos. Because, you know, the world's been in such a chaos for such for so long, from, from day one. But I can tell you, the enemy's just not hiding it anymore. He's like, here I am. This is what I'm doing. And so that way there's more distraction. There's more chaos because we're really seeing it. You know, I never really saw it in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s. But man... I am seeing it so much now. And that just gives us more to pray about. Amen. More to focus on the Lord and not the distractions. So I begin to, I know that God is doing a wake up call on all of us. He's just waking us up. It's time to wake up. It's time to pray. It's time to fast. It's time to have, you know, begin to just seek the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and acknowledge who he is and he shall direct your path. Amen. I want to be led by the Lord. I want to be when he knocks me off the donkey, if he knocks me down and I can't see and he's talking to me, I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to hear what the Lord is saying. You know, just like Paul, man, he, he said, oh, 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 you know, you know, I'm going to listen I'm going to be obedient. Amen. And I liked in Acts 26 and it goes to say, 
in 26 it says in 14 through 18 it says and when we have fallen to the ground come on when we fall to the ground and God speaking to us we better hurry up and get up amen we got to get up it's time to get up it's time to wake up and when we had fallen to the ground I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in Hebrew language Saul Saul why are you persecuting me is it hard for you to kick against the goats so I said who are you Lord and he said I am Jesus whom you are persecuting but rise and stand on your feet for I appear to you for this purpose to make you listen to this to make you a minister and a witness of both of these things which you have seen and of these things which I will yet veil to you I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of their sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me amen so I'm you know I'm gonna listen to what the Lord is saying amen I'm going to get up off my feet and I'm going to do what God has called me to do. And that's to preach the gospel. Amen. So I'm going to wake up. I'm going to stand on my feet. Amen. He heard a voice and he had to focus on hearing what the Lord was saying. Amen. And see, that's what the Lord is trying to say tonight. He wants us to focus. He wants us to hear his voice. The distraction can be anybody or anyone. It, not just you know things like the election or the Olympics but it could be you know anybody so we really need to prepare ourselves you know on praying and hearing God's voice if we don't hear God's voice we're not gonna know we're gonna just stay in this chaos and we're gonna be distracted on anything that pops up and right now my focus is on the Lord amen he's gonna get all the praise he's gonna get all the glory amen so, um, but he, but, so he heard the voice of the Lord and, and he, there was a purpose. The Lord saw a purpose in him. Jesus saw a purpose in him. He called him to minister, to, to do the word of God, to live the word of God, to know the word of God, to breathe the word of God. And that is what he's calling us to do. That is how we will hear his voice is when we begin to hear him, walk with him, talk with him, listen to him. Amen. And we just got to learn to just, you know, spread that gospel like he's wanting us. Amen. Paul just didn't do it in his corner, but he began to do it in his, his city and he began to take it to this city and this city. Amen. Paul, his financial status changed quickly. Amen. You know, I'm sure a judge's, uh, I'm sure a judge's financial was pretty good. Amen. But he chose to listen to the word of God. He chose to be obedient to God. And yes, his status of it changed quickly. He lived the rest of his life as a preacher, supporting himself by making tents. Was he famous? Was he admirable? But in the eyes of the world, he was simply a strange, brash preacher. He was in and out of prison, and he was unimpressive. Amen? And his, and his, uh, his appearance. But he was powerful in his own strength. Paul was weak as any other man, but he was strong in the Lord. When we're weak, he is strong amen and it was it's always about you know i i really look up to paul and if you get a chance you just need to read it over again it's just so powerful because you know he didn't panic when he fell he didn't panic he was wondering what was going on but he really began to listen and i think that sometimes when we are so blind and we can't see and that's what's happening. Sometimes we are blind and we can't see what's around us. But we can hear what God is truly saying. Amen. And it's time for this nation to wake up. It's time for us to stand and take a stand 
and begin to pray like never before. Because this world isn't going to get any better. Amen. It just get, seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. But my faith is in the word of the Lord. My faith is in Jesus Christ. Amen. My focus is on Jesus. So Paul's strength, he was famous in our eyes. Amen. God provided his wealth. So all of this, his success, because he was obedient to the word of God. Amen. God said, you're going to minister. And he sure did. He preached all over. So that's what God is saying to us. In Romans 7. In Romans 7. It says in the verse of 18. He says, I know for I know that in me that this is my flesh. Nothing good dwells for for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I do to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not do to do, it is no, it is no longer I who does it, but the sin that dwells in me. Find then a law that the evil presents with me, that the one who will is to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. Amen. So, yes, we are faced. We are faced with weakness. But however, Paul access was most amazing power that would have ever known. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And we, he would have to keep that, you know, keep that, that flesh under. Amen. Because it, he served the Lord. It was all about pleasing the Lord. Amen. It was about doing his will and not the will of the father, not Paul's will, but the will of the father. So in the Philippians, it goes on to say, Let me go to Philippians. And I probably lost it. Here we go. I love Philippians. I know that his word says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because he sure does. Amen. But in Philippians 4 in verse 11, it says, I'll start with 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you care for me as flourished again through though you surely did care but you lacked opportunity not that I speak in regard to need for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content I know how to be a base and I know how to abound and everywhere and all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and suffer need I can do all things through Christ. Amen. I can do all things through Christ. And this is presented to us all. Amen. This is all of us that I can. I will. I can do all things. He didn't say some things. He said all things through him. Through him. Now, if I was a professional football or famous singer... I would be faithful. I would be a tithe payer. Amen. I would give God more than 10%. But sometimes, and I know that there are, there are people, there are, you know, you know, singers and football players and basketball players that are Christians. And I know they do. Amen. But, but if not, then I will do what God has called me to do. Amen. And that is to minister. That is to preach the gospel. That is to minister to someone because Listen, I love to minister because you really don't know who is going through what. What are they going through? We don't know. But a lot of times the Lord will tell me to call somebody or go out with them because they need to be ministered to. And we should have that. We should have that hunger to minister to people, to love people, you know, to pray for people. And, you know, and, and know that when people are going through 
but we must have an ear to listen to what the Lord is saying. Amen. Our po- our purpose and our focus should be on the Lord. We must listen. And I look at Paul as he listened, but then I look at Samson that it took him a long time to get it. And he didn't listen and he had to go out at the end to sacrifice his life. And I'm thinking, why didn't he listen in the beginning and not go with Delilah? But I want to be an obedient. I want to listen to what the Lord is telling me. Amen. When Paul fell, he, God said, stand up. He stood up. And when God told Samson, don't be out there with Delilah, he didn't listen all the way, did he? He wanted to do his will. He wanted to do what his flesh wanted to do. Amen. But we must, we must focus when what God wants us to do. Amen. Focus. Don't be focusing on Delilah. Focus on Samson. Focus on God. Amen. We got to focus. Satan is always trying hard, but we must remember we live in this world, but we are not of it. Distraction is of the enemy and he knows how to distract but we must resist that the devil are you hearing me we must resist the devil and he will flee from us and and that's in james so we've got to learn to make a stand resist that devil any time that you begin to see things and it's just a, just really bothering you and it's just affecting you and you get in and you just get fleshy amen just remember, man, I rebuke you, Satan. You got to flee. You got to flee from me in the name of Jesus. I'm here to do the will of God. I'm here to learn. I'm here to, I'm hungry for his word. I'm here to get peace and strength from him. Nobody can give you that strength. Nobody can give you the joy like Jesus can. Nobody. Amen. A man or a woman can't give it to you. Delilah couldn't give it to Samson. Come on. Do you hear me? So what makes you think, you know, that you're going to get it from the world. You're not going to get it from the world. The more we focus and on Jesus, the less we focus on what's around us. Amen. I love you guys. Um, the Lord is good. God, like I said, he has a purpose and a plan for you. Um, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not harm you and plans to give you hope and a future. So take comfort and let God be in control of your life. Amen. I love you. I'll see you at 9 o'clock Sunday. And it's 14172 Avon Avenue in the beautiful city of Lathrop. You don't want to miss the service. God bless. Amen.